Well, this was an accomplishment I was looking forward to. Turn the steering wheel. The wheels turn too. Oh, hey folks, welcome back to KEI Fabrication. Okay, so I got the driver's side leg following the A post nicely, coming down to the support on the frame. I've got the passenger side the same. The <laughs> every time I put bars in this car that are equal and exact and you know the right angle and all that stuff, I find more discrepancies with the body. I don't know if you can see this or not but this goes up and further away further away and it gets closer it's close further away and closer well the curvature of this window opening is completely wrong so i'm going to weld some tabs on this and uh, maybe even tack it to the bar to get it to move around where i want it to massage it with a hammer a little bit and then this rail is up too high that'll come down when i pull it into shape and also this one is too low so I've got to roll this up if you remember from here to here this roof was collapsed down and this was folded in and I literally had to weld tabs on this and hang the body and the chassis from the overhead hoist up there and uh, slowly pull the body out well <laughs> I have no idea what the curvature of this drip rail is supposed to be and it is way different from starting from the front all the way back because it was completely destroyed hopefully the before pictures um, 
back me up on on that statement so what I'm going to do I've already cut this loose here I had put it in, in place just so the body had some rigidity while I tried to move it around in position so I've cut this loose uh, so this will roll and I'm going to weld the tab on this like I said pull on it pull it into shape and get this a post to match more closely you can see how nice that follows over there and I do have <laughs> the only thing I have is the window opening of the original door frame that was tacked to the driver's side to help me and I only have the driver's side so I have to use the passenger side you can see the gap and the radius of the curvature is uh, not correct and I match up the door opening molding to the B post you can see the um, the angle of the drip rail is completely wrong and the gap so I've matched this up to the other side it actually matches quite well so now I have to kind of reshape the body to match but I'm very happy with the way the roll bars are coming out they're tacked in place they hug the body nicely and the two bars are correct just the body is not so that's been a challenge you know it's like building a race car chassis with a bent chassis and no chassis jig that's exactly what I'm working here with doing the best I can get the frame level and square so everything else I do is correct to the frame now I can use the the body and the cage as a fixture to pull it into shape so all right let's keep working at it happy with the way the roof line came out. I've tacked it all in place to hold it so the body has got some integrity and I went ahead and measured up a dash bar and I've got it in place and I'm ready to tack it in. Dash bar is tacked in place. I know it looks like it's not level, but the dash itself is missing some metal. And 
Uh, I originally had the center of the bar in the center of the Sharpie marker mark and uh, at the last second I remembered that I really wanted the dash bar and the seat belt bar that runs across the back of the car the back of the cage at the same height and the reason is I wanted the door bar to interact with the cross member in the same exact location so the height of the top door bar will be right where the dash bar and the cross bar that the seat is mounted to that the seat belts wrap over so at the last minute I grabbed my four foot level put it on there and made sure that it was level on both sides so that was the adjustment that I made planning a little bit further ahead into the future well I've been working hard on the old number seven I've been really trying to get the steering wheel connected to the steering box and I'm closer in order to get the wheel steering with the steering wheel I had to mount the steering box and then in order to get the steering wheel mounted I had to put the sides of the cage in and then I needed to put the dash bar in and then I needed to put the steering column support and while I was at it I made the windshield bar so the last step in making the car steer from the wheel is a couple of universal joints and a couple of additional bearing supports all right looking forward to being able to operate the steering from the seat all right let's play what's in the package This one has the double D end and the smooth three quarter round end. Because I have a second universal joint in the steering shaft itself, above and beyond the one at the steering box, I need another bearing support next to the additional universal joint, so we're going to do that. And what I did was I also ordered the double D steering shaft to go in the double D universal joint. So the reason why I did this is if I ever wanted to disassemble the steering column, everything would have been welded if I didn't do this. So I'm going to put this on just outside of the firewall and it'll be coupled with a through bolt. And I am also, so this will get welded to the round shaft and then this will come up and engage with a three quarter round and connect to the other universal joint up by the last piece of the steering column that connects to the steering shaft. So if I ever want to disassemble it for maintenance, I can disassemble it from outside of the firewall, take the whole steering shaft apart from the inside of the car, and this will be connected to the shaft to the steering box. Well, this was an accomplishment I was looking forward to. Turn the steering wheel. 
the wheels turn too. Works really smooth. Obviously it's just kind of uh, mocked up, but all the welding is done on the shaft. You saw a quick video of me welding the universal joints to the shaft. Um, one of the things I did on the bench to fixture everything up is the universal joints, just like a drive shaft, are supposed to be phased. What that means is that the bearing, the universal joint bearing cap should be aligned with them, uh, and that stops the universal joint from getting in a bind. So the pivots can happen um, without a bind. So I phased, I did what's called phasing the universal joints uh, on all sections, including the removable part, the double D um, portion of the steering shaft that is intended so I can disconnect here and slide the whole steering column out. Uh, that has to be phased as well and it is and, and it works really really smooth. Alright folks, that's going to be it for this one. If you're still with me, obviously you like this sort of thing. Thank you so much for following along with the rebuilding and restoration of the old number 7. Otherwise known as the B&J Special. Thanks for watching. Follow along. There's more good stuff to come. We just picked up some more swap meet type parts to get this thing further along. Subscribe, like, please comment below. I'm always encouraged and interested in hearing what your thoughts are and interacting with you. Thanks again. Hit that like button for me, would you please?